Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about this hidden wasp trojan that has been discovered in Linux. You guys may have seen some articles from it. Uh, pretty much every tech uh, journalist group has been talking about the hidden wasp. And I was looking around for the basic information. What is it? How do I get it? What do I do about it? And I can find pretty much nobody had any information. So I want to dig through some of this. So we're going to start by saying this. I am not a security researcher. This is not the area that I am in my element in. So uh, take that with an understanding. I'm going to, uh, in the description, is linked the authoritative blog post from the actual researcher who discovered this stuff. So pardon me if I goof something up. Uh, this is not my general area, my general field. But we are going to talk about what this is, what we can do about it. So this is called Hidden Wasp. It is a malware that is in targeted Linux systems. And so first and foremost, this is a Trojan. It is not a virus, okay? Some things will package all those together. Many or any viruses will find a Trojan. The difference is, is that a Trojan is when somebody already compromises your system, installs a way to backdoor your system. That's a Trojan from, of course, the Greek Trojan horse, all right? Uh, malware itself generally spreads. How do we get it? We don't know. We don't know yet. Um, what this article is going to show is that it does appear to be very professionally developed and it does appear to be linked to a Chinese group. There is a server and some and uh, some IP addresses linking back to China that if you block those systems, that should be the, one of the best things you can do to protect yourself from this. But otherwise, we don't know. We don't know what causes it. In theory, since it's based on some type of server thing, it's the best guess right now is it's some type of compromise from some type of insecure package that already allowed somebody in there and then the hidden wasp is actually a trojan that is installed on top of that and so we really don't know much about the attack vectors this is a brand new system uh even this article here was just written um on the 29th so that is just a few days back and so that's really the information on this is still coming out. There's probably going to be better information coming out, but we want to talk about some of the basic things from the simple Linux users. So what is it? It is a Trojan. It is installed into a system that the people already have some type of access. We don't know exactly what that access is. Could it be spread by malicious websites? Probably because it's linked to a it's linked to some internet protocol, but something has to load and execute on the system. All right. Um, maybe it could go by an email attachment. We just don't know yet. So always be cautious. Um, any viruses as of the time of this recording do not yet pick it up. It would not surprise me if any viruses will start picking this up. So of course, if you're on Linux and you are particularly paranoid, clam AV, it will not detect it as of right now, but because this is getting some big press and we have information about this thing, it's very possible it will find its way in there in a very short period of time. So keep that in mind. Do I say we all need to start running antivirus on our Linux? Probably not. This is very targeted. It's very specific. It's very localized. So uh, it's not like a worm or something that just kind of gets in there and, uh, and spreads through everything simultaneously. That's really not it. So the basic overview, it is very sophisticated. It targets Linux systems and it is called Hidden Wasp. It is a zero day detection, which means that nobody saw this thing coming until it was actively exploited in the wild. Now, if you keep your system patched, you should per be protected from this. Um, most Linux malware that's out there is simple DDoS activity, Bitcoin miners, very, very benign stuff, easy to deal with. This is not so benign. It will allow somebody to take access of your entire system uh, in theory. Um, it has a high probability that it is used in targeted attacks who are already under the victim's control. And there is a large amount of data that was put together from publicly available source code. And there's things like Mariah are in here, Azazel is in here. And my apologies if I did not pronounce that right. Um, this is definitely in the Chinese malware family. And there are some recommendations. Now, I'm going to let you flip through all of the technical aspects because this is the stuff I don't know much about. And so it is talking about the vectors. Now, these are the important things to notice. 
Um, this thinkdream.com, block that in your host file or on your router, thinkdream.com, block that out, send it to 0000 or 127001. That is the main domain that it is using to attack the system or at least to install the payload on the system. So blocking those IP addresses and there's some other links they give us down below as well. Here they're breaking down what the virus or Trojan rather does, um, what the root kit is. Uh, so again, we're not gonna cover all this stuff because I know virtually nothing about all this uh, security stuff. And then you get down to the bottom. What I wanna look at is some of the prevention and mitigation. This is a long blog post. Okay, prevention and response. So the first thing that we want to do, I'm going to load up a uh, virtual machine here. I'm gonna walk you through a couple of things. All right, so the first thing we are going to do when you are seeing this or looking for this According to not these guys necessarily, but another group of ethical hackers who looked into this thing, they basically have said that um, the, the system always works by the first step is it creates a user, okay? It creates a user that will, um, uh, okay, it creates a user that will create an SFTP user account. So what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of walk through a couple of things. So here we are, we got a Linux Mint machine and let me just zoom this in a little bit uh, just so we can read this a little bit better. Now, you can figure out what users are on the system with this cut dash D colon dash F1 and Etsy password. So what this is going to do is this is going to pull a list of all of the user accounts that are on your system. It's not just the user accounts that you can see on the login screen. There's a lot of different accounts that make systems, uh, systems work. So what you'd want to do here, I'm going to try and make this guy bigger, is look through this system here and the first thing, the first warning sign is if you have a user called SFTP, okay, so you can see we have WW data that's related to web server stuff. We have, there's some system D stuff. Ah, it's the devil. Okay, um, just a lot of different things, but we notice that we do not see any SFTP users. So this system is most likely going to be perfectly fine. That's the first thing that we want to look at. Now, the next thing you want to look at is the vector of this wants to add something to the rc.local file um, is not writable. Did I get that file name wrong? Let me double check that. rc.local. Let me go back. Let me look into Etsy. And do we have an RC local on this file? This system, let's see. Okay, this system doesn't even have an RC local on it. Um, so, hey, we're pretty good. So RC local is like a loading script. Some things will require it. So this computer here, uh, my virtual machine here does not have RC local. Um, my other system actually does, my main system does. So let's go ahead and just have a look at that file over there. Let me shut this virtual machine down and then we will jump on over to my main system here. And inside of my main system, let's uh, first let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit so we can see a little bit better. All right, so we're going to look at nano etsy-rc.local. Okay, so this is the basic file and it just exits on zero. If this thing were to hit, it tries to append this file and add some other uh, executable script to the bottom of this file. So if you see anything in this other than this type of file, um, look into what it's doing. Uh, this is potentially a sign that something has infected the system. However, there are other things that could adjust that as well. Just an FYI that there are other things uh, that, that could be done. And so with that, those are two of the things that you look for. Now the article actually points out another issue and that is this uh, ld.so file. So if you search your system for an ld.so file, 
Uh, there are some of these that are rogue. Now, I also found it appears as though flat packs may also install these files. Um, so I looked at, uh, I did a sy uh, system search on my system, and there's a few of these, and every single one of those was related to flat packs that I at one point in time was testing on the system. So just the, because you find some of these such files does not necessarily mean there's an issue. Those are kind of the three things to look for. Look for that created user, um, look to see if anything's added to that rc.local uh, file, and look for anything in the LD. Uh, dash so that looks a little bit odd. So again, this is this is not something that I would be sitting back and going, oh, it's the end of the world. Linux is going down. No, and it's something that is definitely patchable. I think they already have some patches for this out. Um, it's just something that if your system had been compromised and you're on the target list, then it could be something that's on the system. Is it the end of the world? No, not at all. Uh, Linux still has some of the greatest security. If you're extra paranoid, you can run Clam AV on Linux. Um, and my guess is this is going to be pushed out to all of the different systems. So that's basically all the information I could find on Hidden Wasp. It's a Trojan, and uh, these are the files to look for. And have a read through the blog post that is in the description. That is the official thing. All of the articles out there are just grabbing little bits and pieces just to have something. This is actually the authoritative article, so flip through that uh, so that you can learn uh, a little bit more about how this system works. Not a huge, huge deal, but uh, definitely something to keep, uh, keep an eye out for. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below.